Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rox with a little bit of talk about what's at the top of the blog. So let's get to it. And I say I'm gonna take some time off, y'all. All the cashiers, they was like, somebody stole a truck. It's like you can hear it all throughout the store. This rock's coming to you today with a review for Love and Marriage Detroit, Love and Marriage Huntsville, our book four, Real Housewives of Atlanta. Let's get to it, shall we? All right, rock stars, before we get started with the gossip and the politics and the rest of it, let's just have a little, let's just have a little chat, shall we? So you guys know, you can see that I have Michael Jackson here today with me. And um, I've told you guys plenty of times that the mic is here. Mike, Mike, Mike is here to stay. I realize that there are some people that do not like the microphone. I can agree that there are times when the sound does get distorted. And I need to be um, conscious of that so that I don't sit up here and have a whole video of a whole bunch of noise. However, I think that, that we can we can meet a happy medium, like I've told you all. I don't mind people telling me what you do and don't like on my channel. You know, I like to keep a very healthy conversation back and forth. That's why I very rarely block people. I very rarely delete comments. Um, I very rarely, I never turn off my comments. I let people say and express because I feel like that's the reason that YouTube exists. You know, that's the reason why the comment section exists. And I do realize that the comment uh, section also lets me know what my viewers do and don't like. And um, when it's something that I believe that my viewers have a point and um, I agree with them, um, there are things and there are times that I will omit something. Um, if I say some things that could be um, derogatory or offensive to a group of people or a person in particular, you know, I try to be conscious of that kind of thing. I used to say a lot of stuff. People have corrected me over the years. I don't have problems with being corrected. I don't have problems with people disagreeing with me. I don't even have a problem if you don't like me, you know. But what I do... Um, demand here on my channel is respect. So when people tell me that they don't like something that I do, I understand it. I listen to it and I make a decision within myself whether or not I am going to heed whatever it is that they are talking about and make the changes. <clears throat> but if you say something rude to me, or if you say something demeaning to me, if you call me out of my name, um, those kind of things I'm just not going to tolerate. OK, because, again, this is my channel and I feel like I can do what I want to do on my channel, just like you're able to do what you want to do when you're in the vicinity, you know, within your own home or at your job. I mean, you know, when something belongs to you, you do what you want to do. So with that being said, I need people to understand that while I do listen to what people have to say, I still ultimately make the decisions of what I want to say and do on my channel. OK, I'm not in the business of offending my channel and offending my viewers, because obviously I need my viewers to watch my content. I understand that as well. So, again, happy mediums have to come. However, the microphone, Michael Jackson, if you will, he will be staying here. He will be here. OK, on the days that I don't forget it at home, he will definitely be in the video. OK, and if I decide to break out in spontaneous singing, if the mood should hit me, then that is what I will do. But, yeah, the, the rude comments, the, 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 the name calling, you know, and you just kind of feeling like you have that privilege of telling me exactly what to do on my channel. Like that's never going to be a thing. Never, ever, ever. Again, you can you can express whether or not you enjoy the mic, but, <laughs> you know, is, is going to be here is going to be here so i just need everyone to get on that page okay we don't we don't have to make it a weekly thing of you guys telling me because i'm very clear on how you feel it's sort of like the mama joyce wig you guys remember that many of you guys who've been around for a long time will remember the mama joyce wig that i have that most of you hated and you told me all the time 
Okay. And I wore it still for the uh, eight to 10 weeks that I had said back in the day, I used to wear my wigs for like 10 weeks because I didn't want anybody at my job to know that I was wearing a wig. I wanted them to think it was a weave. And so I would stick with a wig for a long time so people would know that I was out there switching out. Today, I don't give a fuck. Okay. So <laughs> I changed my wigs all the time. But when I had the Mama Joyce wig, you guys told me all the time how much you hated that wig. And I still kept it. Like you should know about me that when you tell me something that you don't like, there are many times, there are many chances that I am still going to do it. Because again, say it with me, this is my channel. You get your own channel and then you go do exactly what you want to do on your channel. You can talk how you want to talk, sing if you want to sing, don't sing if you don't want to sing. Okay, you can wear what you want, fix your hair any kind of way. You can do all of that, but on your channel. Okay, this channel here, we're going to do what the fuck I want to do. And what I want to do right now anyway is have Michael Jackson. So Michael Jackson will be here. Okay, and I sure hate to lose people. That is definitely not my intention. But if you feel like you cannot do it, you cannot suffer through a video of me talking with the microphone, then it's as easy as a click off of the video, X out of it. Don't watch the video. That's, that's pretty much where it is, y'all. But the Michael Jackson is staying. And that's all it is not that big of a deal it's just an understanding a conversation that sometimes we have to have house cleaning rocky still love y'all even the ones that don't like the mic but yeah I, I just needed to make it clear where we stand with the things okay all right let's get to the gossip all right you guys i was going to start with a different story but um we'll start with politics because i was just on the phone with deborah and deborah just told me that uh matt gates has decided to step down from the nomination that YSAP had uh, chosen him as the Eter attorney general. Um, I don't know what prompted him to quit because he was smiling and looking like he, you know, he was looking like he had finally made it. He got to the point to where he wanted to be, but I think all of the pushback from not just the Democrats, but the Republicans as well, um, pressing for them to release those details of the report um, because you guys know that I think the Speaker of the House, don't get me, I didn't write this information down, but I think it was the Speaker of the House said that they were not going to unseal the documents from his investigation um, where he was allegedly accused of sex trafficking young girls, taking them across state lines, having sex with them, paying to have sex with them, paying them to have sex with other people. So, you know, people wanted to see what the investigation said. They sealed those uh, results. However, you know, there was pressure to, to release it. Well, now I guess the pressure will go away because Matt Gates has decided to step down. He will not do it. And um, I mean, I guess score one, score one for the other side. I mean, I guess, child. I mean, we still got a lot of people that have been sworn, I mean, have been um, elected, selected, if you will, from YSAP. I guess the newest selection that we saw was the McMahon girl, uh, the lady from um, the, the uh, WWE. What's her name? Linda McMahon. Um, you guys know that YSAP did have a relationship with the WWE back in the day, and I guess he remained friends with them. So, um, yeah, he has now signed on um, Lisa McMahon as long Linda, I'm sorry, Linda McMahon, as long as she's confirmed, she will be over the Department of Education. Now, I'm not saying that you didn't have to be a savvy business person to operate in the WWE. It's definitely not a woman's sport, and, you know, maybe more so now, but probably back in the day, you know, she probably was a trailblazer and did many things within the organization. Sorry, that's the train. <clears throat> within the organization that, you know, has helped in some kind of way. So she may be a business person. Um, we won't take that away from her. However, over the Board of Education, you would hope that they would put somebody that has worked in the Board of Education. See, the thing is, 
YSAP is grabbing all these people for these jobs who have absolutely no experience in those jobs. And that is the part that is very concerning. You have somebody that's a business person, you still need to know the nuances and the intricacies that happen when you work in, in education, okay? It doesn't always translate from business to business, okay? You've got kids that you're responsible for, administrative type things. I mean, it's a lot of stuff that goes into a testing. Um, you know, these kids have mental abilities and disabilities. It's, it's just a lot of things that go into it. And just getting anybody in these positions, in this case, Department of Education, is just, you know... Now, I'm not as concerned for Linda McMahon's position as I was for Matt Gates's position um, because that was a very powerful position. However, still, Department of Education is very serious and it is still something that is necessary here. Them saying that they're going to get rid of the Department of Education is craziness to me. I still want to know how that is going to even happen. Okay. But uh, yeah, so we've got her as um, uh, the person over the Department of Education. We also have Dr. Oz. Yes, Dr. Oz, who had the talk show uh, for many, many years. YSAP has put him over Medicare and Medicaid. Um, I don't really know what that job entails. However, I know Medicare and Medicaid is um, responsible for helping many, many people who otherwise could not afford insurance or people who have aged to a certain age where now they're getting, I always get Medicare and Medicaid mixed up, but you know, where they're getting that assistance um, at a discounted price or free possibly, you know. Anyway, they've got Dr. Oz, who we've had some issues with Dr. Oz in the past, saying stupid things and all that. I mean, remember, we had a lot of Dr. Oz when the pandemic first started. He was saying all kind of stuff. I didn't write it down. I don't really remember. But I remember I had a good, a good, good side eye for Dr. Oz back when the pandemic was going on. And then he kind of took a low profile because I think he realized that most people did not like him. It's a whole bunch of people walking by my car <laughs> just looking at me. Hello. Anyway, um, so yeah, Dr. Oz is going to be over Medicare and Medicaid. And again, we're going to get more and more people um, that are going to be placed in uh, YSAP's administration. I have a feeling that they're going to push most of these people through. And we're just going to have to deal with what we deal with. The thing that concerns me most, of course, is the Department of Defense, who's over the military. Okay. Like, that is something that affects this country as a whole. Everybody is affected by the safety of this country. So that is what concerns me the most. That and also RFK over the health department, y'all. I just don't know how that's going to work. <laughs> I don't know how that's going to work, but it's not for me. It's not for me to figure out. We just going to pray every morning that we can make it through these four years and let that be that, child. That's that on that. <clears throat> what else I got in politics? I feel like I got something else. It's so funny. Somebody called um, Trump's cabinet. They said Trump's cabinet is looking more like a, a junk drawer. <laughs> and I was just like, you know what? That's what we're going to call it from here on out. We're going to call it Trump's drunk drawer. Trump's junk drawer. George, I guess this can go within the politics section. They're saying that many, many young people have chosen to um, get tubal ligation or uh, vasectomies um, because Roe versus Wade was overturned. Um, and there are a lot of young people that are concerned that may get pregnant um, or get someone pregnant who feels like they're not going to have access to any type of birth control or something like that. And people are starting to get their tubes tied and, um, you know, the men are getting vasectomy. So they're not able to produce the sperm to impregnate a woman, which is an interesting story to me. I wonder how true that is. They're saying that this age group is for people between the ages of 18 to 30 that a study was done and that this age group was the one that was the, the ones that were seeking out tubal ligation and vasectomies. I don't know. The story sounds a little fishy. I just got to say, like, it seems interesting that I don't know. I just feel like if you were 18 to 30 years old, you probably are not responsible enough to actually be calling the doctor and saying, I want to get my tubes tied. I want to get, you know, a vasectomy because I don't think I'm going to want to have kids, you know? 
It's like if you weren't responsible enough in some of those cases, I know this isn't, doesn't happen to everybody that's getting abortions, but what I'm saying is if you weren't responsible enough to keep yourself from getting pregnant or getting somebody pregnant in the first place, I don't see you taking the precautionary measures of going and getting your tubes tied or getting a vasectomy, okay? So the story to me is interesting. It's weird. I'm not sure, you know, where the studies, where this information came from. But yeah, that's what they're saying that... Um, these kids are not trying to, you know, 18 to 30 is not trying to have kids, so they're doing that. 18 to 30 is actually very young still. There are a lot of people who wouldn't even have been thinking about having kids that early anyway, you know. So I wouldn't want people to do such a permanent thing as having their tubes tied or having a vasectomy when you might be 32 and decide one day that you want to have kids. And now you've done something where it keeps you from doing that. So yeah, I don't know. The story just feels like propaganda-ish, even though I am on the on the side of pro-choice, okay? But it still sounds a little propaganda-ish, you know, because I, I just don't know. People can be inquiring, but are they really setting out to go and do it? So yeah, y'all take that story with a grain of salt. Also, while we're talking about politics, we can talk about Ellen DeGeneres and um, Portia de Rossi, her wife. Uh, they've been married for some years now. They have put their big Montece Montecito, Montecito, California mansion on the market. Montecito is near Santa Barbara and up there in that area where Oprah and all the rich folks, you know, um, uh, um, uh, princess, old oh, girl, and uh, old oh, boy. What's their names? Y'all know who I'm talking about. They all live up that way. But anyway... Um, they were threatening, I guess, to move if YSAP did indeed win um, the election. And since YSAP did do that, now they're like packing up and getting the hell out. Like a lot of people have been saying, we haven't been seeing actual people do it. We've been hearing a lot of folks saying that they're going to move. But yeah, these two are actually making good on it. It's easier for them, obviously. They're rich, okay? A lot of people don't have that option. You know, I would love to move to a different country. I actually would be open to moving to a different country if I could afford it, if everything worked out the way that it was supposed to. Absolutely, I would love to live in a different country. But you know what? This is also my country. I was born and raised here, and nobody's going to run me out. I am a heterosexual woman who's married to a man. Um, if I was in a gay relationship, I would be very concerned. I would be very concerned, you know, and I, I don't blame anybody who was in a, a gay relationship feeling like they might need to go somewhere else because their rights, I mean, they've made it very clear how they feel about that community. Um, and I feel like they're going to get affected a lot, you know. So unfortunately, <clears throat> these two have decided to leave. They said they probably will never come back, um, not to live anyway. And um, I'm not mad. And we'll probably see more and more people doing it. I mean, a lot of people were talking about it, but the reality is is here now. So either shit or get off the pot. And I guess Ellen and Portia was just like, yeah, we shouldn't. <laughs> they are gone um, or they're leaving. They're moving over to the UK and they'll just come back to visit every now and then. Would you guys have left? If you're able, if you were able to, if you, like I said, if everything fell into the right place, if you could afford it, you know, you got a place there to stay, you know, you worked out everything here in the States or whatever, would you also move to a different country? I would be open to it. At this age, where I am in this stage in my life, I would definitely be up to, open to it if, if it all worked out. Um, I wouldn't have done that back when I was in my 30s or maybe even 40s. But now that I'm I'm close to retirement and all that, absolutely so. So, yeah, y'all let me know um, if you guys would do that. And then lastly, I guess in politics, we can talk about sis Jasmine Crockett, honey. I said, listen, Jasmine said y'all got her fucked up so many times, so many times. And she is tired, but she will she will rise to the occasion every single time, won't she? She going to get them people together up in that damn Congress meeting. And this time she had to remind the white men, white men in particular, who love to scream about, you know, making America great again them being oppressed, which I don't even know how people can say those kind of things without laughing because 
like Jasmine Crockett said, when has a white man ever been oppressed? Okay, the actual definition of oppression, because maybe y'all don't know that, but the definition of oppression is prolonged, cruel, or unjust treatment of a person or persons. Historically here in these here United States, white men have not been oppressed. They've been the oppressors because they live in a system where they are the ones who are on top, you guys. You cannot oppress somebody who already has the keys to everything. Oppression only happens to people who have no power. And Black people, even though we've made many, many strides, at the end of the day, Black people don't have as much power. And so Black people still remain oppressed. All right. And uh, J Jasmine Crockett had to say that and let the motherfuckers know in, <laughs> you know, real loudly and um, distinctly. And I'm sure she's going to get the, um, I'm sure people are going to say that she's the angry congresswoman or she's the angry, what is she? Is she a representative? I'm sure people are going to start putting the moniker on her and calling her angry and mad. And every time you see her, she's fussing and all that. So we already know what what it is. The woman is not angry or mad. The woman is just trying to explain to you stupid ass people when you start talking about oppression. You know, like when were you forced to go somewhere and, and work as slaves, you know, and please don't be in my comments telling me, Roxanne, the word is enslaved, not slaves. Because when you worked as slaves, okay, you you never you've never worked as a, as a slave. You've never been forced to work and do things against your will. So l let's stop the bullshit. So we love Jasmine. I I intend on hearing. We love Jasmine. I'm sure we will hear more and more about her as time goes on. I'm sure she has a long history in. Um, politics i'm sorry you guys people are like walking by and it's keeping me it's getting me distracted so yeah that's it for politics y'all did not mean to talk about it for 20 minutes but <laughs> at least we got some shit on there all right you guys y'all let me know what you think about all that and let's move on to the next story all right you guys so next story up i did watch the interview um with lisa ray and carlos king and it was a very well done interview it was a really good interview Okay, I don't usually have the patience to sit through these long ass celebrity interviews because honestly, you guys, I don't be caring. Like, I don't care about nobody who has no effect in my life, you know. And when I do care, it's usually somebody that I've really long admired and want to hear what they have to say and all that. And, you know, Lisa Ray has never been that person for me. However, I will say that this interview made me like Lisa Ray more than I thought that I did. Now, I, 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 she's not a person that I felt like I didn't like, but I always felt like Lisa Ray has taken herself so seriously. I still do believe that, but I think that Lisa Ray always seemed like such a intense, harsh, mean girl that I've just kind of, every time I kind of see Lisa Ray, I'm just sort of like, uh, you know, I, I can't with Lisa Ray. I didn't watch Queens, of, uh, the Queens of, what what was it called? The Queens of Soul that her, the show that she did with um, Selena and all them. Like I didn't do, watch that show. So I didn't really get to see much of her personality, I guess. So sitting and watching her wa uh, talk to Carlos, I was able to get a different impression of Lisa and uh, Lisa Ray. Let me say it right. Yeah. <laughs> Cause she will correct you, but um, but that interview made me be like, you know what? I could be friends with her. Like, I definitely like people who are direct. I don't like a whole bunch of fake foolishness. I don't like a whole bunch of, hey, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't like all that. Like, I need, I prefer the people that I am around to be, to say what they fuck it is, say what, how they feel in, and let's let that be that, you know? And that is 100% who Lisa Ray is. That girl makes a lot of sense when she's talking. Um, I can relate to a lot of the, the things that she was saying. I thought it was just a really, it, it made me look at her differently. You know, she's in a different season in her life. Um, she's gotten older. She's a grandmother now. You know, she's had death in her, she's had loss. She's suffered some things like most of us have. Um, 
but she's in a place where I was just like, I can, I can appreciate it. If you watch the video or the interview, you know, maybe you felt the same way. Um, because I, I just felt like I was listening to like, I was having a conversation with like one of my sister girls, like, you know, that kind of, she just is just down home, down to earth. And, um, I think that if there are people out there that feel like Lisa Ray is like real extra and all that, then maybe you should watch the video too, that watch the interview too, because, um, I enjoyed it. People had a problem with her saying how, you know, what man she des deserves and kind of person that she wants, um, her expectations. You know, I saw a lot of people saying in the comments, you know, okay, she got all of these ridiculous expectations. That's the reason why she is still single. And, um, it, maybe, maybe not. But what I can appreciate is, I mean, you can't be mad at a woman for saying, this is what I require. You know, I think that if more people had um, standards of what they know will work for them, relationships will probably work out better for them. Okay. Um, so I, I didn't have a problem with her saying like, you can't afford me, you know, because the fact of the matter is there are many men who can't afford many women. You know, you go find somebody where they going to work out you know, it's going to be all right. Now, it's okay if a woman decides to be with somebody that makes less than them and do all that. That's fine, too. But if this is what she has decided decided for her life, well, why are y'all mad at this woman about her saying what she wanted to do? So, yeah, I didn't have a problem with that. I didn't I didn't have a problem with that. I think that cuts out a whole bunch of rigmarole. Like, you, you, you already done told the nigga, like, listen... If you can't take me here, we can't do this. If we can't have a conversation about that, if you are unknowledgeable about this, you know, I think that that's fine. I think that that's okay. No problems there. I know one thing, honey, Lisa Ray is never going to let uh, Nicole Murphy <laughs> live. <laughs> Baby, she going to keep her foot on that girl neck for the rest of her life. Like I could tell that if Lisa Ray and Nicole Murphy ended up in the same room at the same time, you know, there was nothing between them but space and opportunity. I think that Lisa would probably beat her ass. Like I, And if she knew that she didn't have a lot to lose, because obviously she's a woman and she's not going to just be fighting nobody. But if it was a perfect situation set up, she most definitely would get with that damn Nicole Murphy. And that Nicole Murphy is, whew. <laughs> you know, I have always heard that she had her ways, um, but damn, you know. So we, we, we've heard about Nicole cheating with him, cheating on Michael Stray and cheating on Eddie Murphy. We even heard about Eddie Murphy having to reach out to Nicole Murphy when that shit happened with Leela Rashawn's husband. Okay, and he actually supposedly scolded her like, what the fuck? Like, don't be fucking up my name while you out here doing all this. I mean, we still think of her as Eddie Murphy's ex-wife, you know? So he was just like, get that shit together. You, whatever this wholeness that you got in you, you gonna have to, you gonna have to delete it. Shout out to Drea. <laughs> yeah, honey, Lisa, is, Lisa Ray is not going to let, ever let anybody forget that Nicole Murphy was out there laying it low and spreading it wide, child, and I'm talking about awful wide. She's tall. She got long legs. Long, long legs. <laughs> but yeah, y'all, good interview. You guys let me know if you watched it, what you took from it. Did it make you look at Lisa differently or was it just me? I feel like she is um, probably misunderstood. Um, her conversations talking about her being pretty, being the blessing and the curse. Like, I can see how all that is true. Yeah, I just enjoyed it. So y'all let me know what you thought about the interview. And um, put all that in the comment section below. All right, you guys. That's it on this video. See, I got through the whole video without seeing it. This will be... In everlasting love, this will be the love I waited for. This will be the first time anyone has loved me. Oh, 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 oh. I'm so glad. No, I'm not going to sing, y'all. I see, I told y'all that I'm going to learn how to control it. And um, it is windy as fuck out here. You guys see, did you hear the car just shift?
baby, I need to get my ass back. And I was ordering some food. And when they was handing it to me through the drive-thru, it almost blew out the lady's hand. It is windy. Anyway, y'all, I'm going to get on off of here. Why is this man just standing outside of my car? It's so annoying. They know I'm in this car. Do you hear him? Y'all want to be on the damn camera? Is that what it is? Oh, fucking annoying. Anyway, you guys, they just saved y'all from another song. <laughs> <laughs> <See what I hear. laughs> anyway y'all let me get off of here we do this every single week so make sure you thumbs up the video comment and subscribe and make sure you come back until next time rock stars